You can't pick UConn, Houston, or Purdue, Mike Palm. Who you got? This team can shut you down defensively when it has to. I'll take a shot with you. This is Sharp Money with Patrick Maher on VSIN, the sports betting network. Palm versus the big guy, Mike. You won the coin toss mm. backstage. It's very simple. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Questions, debate. A little different today. I mixed it up. So we'll start here. How many quarterbacks drafted in the first round, Mike Palm? I think this is very interesting. Um, I think four is a lock, and then you have to figure out Penix or Knicks are going to be taken. And I can't say yes on either of them. I mean, so much is going to depend on if people can lock up quarterbacks um, through free agency or not to draft at the bottom of the round. But I'll be conservative and save four. Okay. It's five. Williams, Daniels, May, yeah. McCarthy. I have Penix going. And the only reason I don't have it at six is is because this draft is so rich with offensive line and wide receiver talent that teams that were in the playoffs last year are going to be able to get elite performers at those spots late in the first round, so no one's going to be able to trade back into the first to get Bo Nix. Okay, big guy, you're up. Opening day in baseball or the first full slate on a Sunday in the NFL? Uh, It's opening day in baseball because of the word hope. See, the difference between NFL and MLB is hope. The Rangers on opening day last year were 45 to 1. They faced the D-backs, who were about 80 to 1 to win it all. Uh, You have to go back to 2016, where a favorite at the beginning of the year ended up winning the World Series. When we start opening day, there are more teams that play in MLB that have a real chance to end up being World Series champs than in the NFL you get someone becoming the Super Bowl champ. You have the Astros in 22, were 10 to 1, Braves 10 to 1, Nat 16 to 1. You you could take some long shots. As much as I love baseball, and Bart Giamatti said it in the Greenfield of the Minds, it begins in spring with everything begins anew. The simple answer is that the people have told us it's that opening weekend in the NFL. It is now the third biggest weekend of the year here in Las Vegas. Football has dominated the calendar to the point where this weekend, which would not have been a top 10 weekend five years ago, is now third, slightly ahead of wild card weekend. Money talks. Okay, you can't pick UConn, Houston, or Purdue, Mike Palm. Who you got? Well, I'll give you a little rest of development here. It was all a dream about Tennessee. Rick Barnes has had his struggles in the postseason, but I don't think he's ever had a score like Necht. They go through the battles in this SEC. Everybody talks about the Big 12, and yes, it's deep. This SEC is loaded. In a lot of years, it would be the best conference, and this team can shut you down defensively when it has to. I'll take a shot with Tennessee if I can't have the top three. Uh, it's Duke, 22-1 to 1 right now at DraftKings to win the title. I think they're totally slept on. You've got one senior, three sophomore to rely on in that starting lineup. They have five guys who average in double-figure scoring. Roach shoots 44% from three. He's a senior. Filipowski's a mismatch. I think they're going to go overlooked as like a three-seed in the NCAA tournament. Dustin, what was the best era of Saturday, Saturday Night Live? Oh, this is the era of Sandler and Farley and Spade and Mike Myers. I think my entire personality was created off of Wayne's World, Lunch Ladyland, uh, Opera Man, Matt Foley, inspirational speaker, the Paul McCartney interview with Farley. That group, to me, created me as a human being today. I think you have to go back to the beginning. And the legends, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Jane Curtin, the Blues Brothers spawns from this, Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, the Coneheads, and who could forget Father Guido Sarducci. Mike Palm, old school or wedding crashers? I'm going to go wedding crashers because I like Luke Wilson a lot better than Owen Wilson. And, and, and I, I, I think the romantic humor that's involved in wedding crashers and the storyline and plot development is just a little less sophomoric than old school, which doesn't really appeal to me. Old school, you're my boy, Blue, Frank the Tank, which now I've reached the age where Frank the Tank getting made fun of for a nice little day with the family at Home Depot actually sounds like something I might do on a Saturday afternoon. But if you ask me right now, could I get my boys together, we could go back to college and start a frat, I would do it. The answer is old school. Dustin, for next year only, life on the line, Justin Fields or Russell Wilson? (laughs) I love this question because if you were setting the odds for it, Uh, Us dying would be minus 200. Wilson, 11 and 19 last two years. Fields, 10 and 28 in his career. And I'm going to choose Justin Fields 
Because I know Russell Wilson, unless Malcolm Butler's in the game, won't do something to lose me the game. But I don't know if he can do anything to win it. At least with Fields, we're going to take some shots. We're going to go down swinging. And it's going to be a lot of fun right before we end things. I'll go with Fields as well. You're on one on the upswing, one on the downswing. Um, the, the added versatility of the running game while well, Wilson refuses to run anymore. And then to me, the telling factor is how they lined up to talk about Russell Wilson, all his former teammates in Seattle, the offensive linemen in Denver, his head coach in Sean Payton. The guy is delusional and corny, which is a very bad conversation, uh, com uh, combination. <laughs> <coughs> Mike Palm, yeah. what's the best Major League Baseball park you've been to in person? <sighs> I'm going to tell you it's T-Mobile in Seattle. I had a terrific time there. It's a beautiful venue. The bars and restaurants are very underrated. And it was my son's very first major league game, and they treated him like a king. They took him in the dugout. They did a whole photo shoot with him. I was blown away by, by uh, T-Mobile. Baseball belongs in cities, and I need my stadium to be built into the workings of a city. It's very important. There's, we have too many stadiums and random parking lots now. I need that outside atmosphere. I need bars. I need restaurants. I need, I need a clean feel as well. And that's why Camden Yards in Baltimore is by far the best I've ever been to. You factor in that ballpark, the bar scene, the restaurants, plus the inner harbor and everything around there, you could spend an entire day down there. Two guys on top of their game right now. I thought you were going to so say Petco. That's where I thought I've you were going. I've never been. Oh, okay. I've never been. <laughs> Patrick likes Petco. Let's get weird. Dustin, you know Mike Palm and his personality. Tell me why you think Mike Palm would be great in Survivor. Oh, he'd be the favorite. I don't even care who else was in it. Mike Palm would find a way to get two or three different factions working against each other, thinking he was on their side, working them against each other the whole way. And in the end, Mike Palm will just be sitting there with his hands up going, I guess I'm the winner, guys. You all knocked each other out. You know, we're not saying groups, but I had the same answer for Dustin. I think he's good at forming alliances to remove the people that are not liked and finding common enemies. I'm not sure if I can find any example recently. But also... I think if there's these, these competitions on these islands and that and all, I think he's come um, with a lot of storage where he can get away with not excel necessarily excelling at things. I know I'd be the worst. I'd be sitting off by myself on the island, <laughs> not, not talking to anybody. <laughs> okay, let's see. Mike Palm, you're up next. The most underrated and overrated cities in the U.S. One, one apiece. I think St. Louis is the most underrated. And I love Chicago, but I mean, it's on everybody's list. St. Louis is a great town. It's a very drivable town. There's a ton to do if you have families. The Arch, Knott's Berry, Farm Bush Stadium, a great baseball town. I have to go with L.A., Patrick. All apologies to you. But who wants to deal with the traffic and the smog and the 86% tax rate? My uh, overrated city is going to be a weird one, I'll be honest. Mm. It's uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And oh. it's not that it's a sexy city, <laughs> but I can't believe this city actually has professional sports teams. It is the most nondescript, boring, khaki and blue button downtown with nobody with a personality. They drive a, a very reliable four-door sedan. It's like a diet version of Atlanta without any of the fun. Okay. Your underrated city? Oh, my underrated Saratoga, New York. Feels like a time warp. Uh, it's like going back into like the 40s. And one thing I like to judge a city on is the lack of chain restaurants. Lots of mom and pop still alive in Saratoga. Which all-star game is the best across the four majors, Dustin? Well, we know they don't matter. Football has resulted now, or resorted to flag football. The NBA is unwatchable. At least with baseball, you can get an individual matchup of a pitcher saying, here's my best against the hitter's best. And you can still play the game, even if you're not playing at 100% your hardest. So to me, baseball has to be the best all-star game going. It's the only one that even has any semblance to what they play during the course of the year. Uh, the pitchers all know they're only going to pitch one inning. You're going to get their best stuff for 15 to 20 pitches. Everybody loves the home run derby. It's not close. 2-0-1 so far. Let's go through the grading. Mike Palm versus the big guy. <coughs> Quarterback question. First round was a push. Major League Baseball opening day full slate NFL goes to Mike. NCAA. Uh, the question about the, co the team. That goes to Dustin with Duke. SNL, a push. The movie, Old School or Wedding Crashers, goes to Dustin. He's up two to one. Fields, Wilson, push. Uh, the Ballpark, a push. Overrated Cities, that one goes to Mike Palm. 
and the All Star Game push. is a push. Another so push. So the answer is draw. Hold on. The <laughs> answer no. Oh. The answer is oh. oh. It comes down to who selling me on Survivor. Mm. Oh. Mm. And Mike's strengths are his weaknesses because Dustin did a better job oh, of I selling know, Mike yeah, as I've the never... winner of Survivor. Oh, that is <laughs> a three. <laughs> what a setup. Two <laughs> and four. So we have a winner for the big guy. He is. It is now Mike two wins, Dustin one, and one push. Mike, is it fair? It's always fair, Patrick. It's always fair. <laughs> <laughs>